In case you missed it, go check out the link in the description for part one of this card show vlog featuring this table right here. Triple Crown here covering the Eastgate Mall Show for February 2024. You can see me walking in on an icy road. A lot of snow the day before. Seems to be the uh, MO here in 2024 heading to these shows. Some inclement weather, but nice and toasty inside, and hopefully there is some heat on the tables, if you know what I mean. I'm looking to get into some bigger cards today. I should probably still find myself going through some value boxes, but, but for the most part, I want to stick to what is on the tables and what is in the showcases. With that said, let's see what we can find today. I'm happy to let you see whatever, man. Super okay. Power. You feel free to lift it. All right, one thing that you're going to notice at this show that is somewhat challenging is the glare and lighting issues. You can see kind of the overhead window there on the roof of the mall is shining down, and it makes it hard to see in the cases, as you can tell on camera. It is equally difficult to see in person. And then in some of the areas of the mall, it's very dimly lit. And because of that, I have to be really careful when I'm buying raw cards because I can't see things as well. Also, the glare sometimes makes it more difficult to tell certain colors apart on the parallels, and I kind of have to rely on what the flip says, uh, just because my eyes might deceive me because of the glare. So here I see a nice numbered burrow that's really reasonably priced. Finding reasonably priced burrow stuff in Cincinnati is a bit of a challenge, and I'm going to go ahead and make my move on it. Could you do 140 on this burrow blazers? 150. All right, That's about as expedited of a negotiation as you're going to get. Really cool. Joe Burrow optic blazers there. You can see the handshake to seal the deal. This is the black Pandora version. I have grown to like the parallels of these quote unquote case hit cards more and more just because the print run on the unnumbered ones is unknown. At least with the Black Pandoras, even though I'm not the biggest fan of this particular parallel, I do like the fact that I know for sure it's numbered to 25. The actual Blazers, how many of them are really out there? Who really knows? But appreciate this gentleman working with me. He said that he watched and enjoyed the videos. So big thank you to him. And I appreciate everyone who uh, complimented me on the videos here at the show. Really? You can't even find the elephant stuff. They're tough. They're not like... They're somewhere between like zebra and tiger. Okay. So. And they didn't put elephant in this year's select retail. Oh, they did it. Odd, yeah. Is they're, it in they're hobby? Still, they're still tiger. The zebra's oh. hobby and tiger's retail. That year it had tiger and elephant in retail. This year it just had tiger in retail. Need to press the the wax, the let me know. Shut the front. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. They, there weren't. I think there wasn't. There. Black Flash 101 too, because I think the best in retail you could hit was the golds this year too. Because last the first year you could hit the Black Flash 101s too. Up there. Do you have any football, or are you just in? Someone bought it all. That's what that's what I've got left. That little bit, but not, not high end. Someone cleared me earlier. Not the first time I heard this, nor would it be the last time that I heard this at the show. There were a couple of guys going around who spent a lot, and I mean a lot of money, on people's football cards and really wiped them out before Justin and I had a chance to walk around likely repackers or whatnot sellers and while it's fun when they come up to your table and uh and clean you out of your stuff it definitely is a lot more difficult when you're walking around trying to buy things because well a lot of stuff is already picked over especially for ultra modern football which means that i probably have to pivot at this point and that's why i'm focusing on this guy's wrestling stuff and some of his 2024 tops baseball uh, right now, I kind of consider in-season for wrestling with WrestleMania approaching. It's usually when I sell the most wrestling, although I don't nearly deal in the volume that I do uh, the regular sports. But it is something that I like to keep an eye on here. He's got a few nice case hit level cards with that Kaboom there and then that Elephant Skin parallel. And I'd like to go ahead and try to bundle those two together. Let's see what I can come up with. How much is your Bailey Kaboom? Put it two. That's called two twenty five. There's not online. How about a, a, ten, a ten just did like a ten, <laughs> a, a ten just did like five eighty Australian. I think she's getting a push with the WrestleMania. 
<laughs> it was her knee. This guy definitely knows his stuff on the wrestling cards, and he is right. She is getting a push right now, meaning that they're trying to put her in a spot where she'll be in a marquee match and look favorable heading into that match. And ultimately, that's why I'm going to pass on this card. He is right. The last one had done 225, but this is the equivalent of buying a baseball player who has a good first half and starts the all-star break. That's not the right time to buy. The better timing is to buy when they're lower and they're slumping and you believe in them and they can turn it around, uh, perhaps for a strong second half. Kind of the same thing with wrestling or any entertainment style cards. So it'd be, you know, actors heading into a big movie like a new Star Wars or Marvel movie. Whatever the case may be, ideally it's before the hype sets in for whatever entertainment product they may be a part of and that's ultimately why I pass on this card right here is because well if I wanted it I probably should have bought this a couple months back now is definitely not the right time to go after it fairly priced but a lesson learned for next year's cycle <laughs> What are you asking on this guy? Uh, 25 bucks. Like How much is the Akuna buyback? Ten. That Bryce Young card is going to be one that I will probably stash. I really do love the color match on the blue ice. I just love the blue ice in general, so how could I pass that up at 25 bucks? And then the buyback cards at half off, yeah, I'll take that every single day of the week. I have cashed in quite a few of those this year. This guy has a pretty impressive start to the Charlie Jones Rainbow. He's a rookie kick returner for the Bengals here. And I might just have to go ahead and snag this. This is definitely something that would be nice for a local interest show. How much is the Kincaid Duel? Uh, 45. Okay. And then if you were to sell the Charlie Jones Rainbow, what would you want for all of them? I'd probably be at like, I'd probably lose a little, but I'd be at 200 bucks. It was fun while it lasted. This feels like a pretty good deal, but I know someone who will want this more than me. Justin had to leave this show early for a different event, not card related. And because of that, I gave him a call to let him know about this. I know that he's bought quite a few Charlie Jones cards, and I think these would work better in his case, being that he's a Bengals fan. There's some pretty decent parallels in there. The retail red SSP, the black and white checker, the red and white checker. And then you got that first off the line blue shimmer, some more low numbered stuff, and then some nice color match stuff mixed in as well. So overall, a pretty good lot, but this is probably in better hands with a Bengals fan. So Justin and I talk it over. He tells me where he wants to be at, and I think I can get him there. We're not too far off. So I'm going to try to bundle in his little stack there with my two cards and get us the best price possible. Ideally, keep us around... 200 but i'm guessing he's probably going to want closer to like 220 for all of these i would do 210 this stack here with this and these two did you do 215 yeah that's fine close enough appreciate it yeah, no problem. i probably could have got this for 210 if i had pushed back a little bit and said I was holding firm at 210. I don't think that this dealer was going to let this go over $5, but I wasn't about to either. 215 is more than fair, especially for all the work that he had to put into putting together that partial rainbow, which props to him because he did a pretty good job of tracking down some of those tougher to find parallels. So win, win, win deal. Justin gets his stack of Charlie Jones. I get my two cards, including that nice buyback and the Bryce Young to stash and the dealer moves pretty nice stack of cards get some extra cash to take home with them that's what we call an all-around win do you, do you have an idea i pulled this years ago obviously in 2021 
I think I had it priced at like 150 or 200 at the time because it's that super short print color wheel or whatever that case hit or whatever you call it. Um, but I can't seem to find. I mean, right now I don't know if it's my service, but everything I'm looking on is giving me no results. And I think it's because I have no service. Right Right, they have, they, it hasn't sold raw since August of last year. Of last so, year? Yeah, that's why you probably... So what were you thinking? I think 150 is probably pretty fair on it. 150 is pretty fair on it? Yeah. I like it. Would you do 150? I would. Yeah? yeah. All right, you know what? Yeah. Let's do Sweet. it. Hell yeah. If I ran this trout at auction right now, I'm not 100% convinced I would get what the last sale was for it, but it's a card that I think is well worth the price at 150. A lot of people have soured on Trout's cards, but this is pretty common when baseball players get to his age. When they start to decline a little bit, the injuries catch up. A lot of it is, what have you done for me lately? And the hate on Trout right now has made it a pretty good opportunity to buy on him if you're someone who is so inclined and are looking for a good value. I think Trout stuff right now is probably at some of the best prices we've seen since his emergence. A little heat time rolls. That's good. Good luck, yeah. Is that how they can contact you too? They're interested in the cups. Uh, TikTok. How you doing, okay. sir? Does it show? They got the bottom Let's there. Can they find you? On? Um, if they just type in the e time rolls, you can sell as much as possible, right? Pop yeah. out. You can actually see Chad yeah. signing, signing these. He's just probably bought more than enough, huh? But you gotta keep looking, you know. That's it's still stuff on so my cool. table, right? <laughs> you never know. You might see something. Like Here's some B-roll here to end the video with some Jerry Springer final thoughts. Uh, overhaul, pretty solid show. I didn't include as many of the clips of me buying just because the lighting was just too bad to, <laughs> to really include them. I apologize for that. It's just the nature of recording inside a mall where the lighting isn't necessarily conducive to a good card show atmosphere. It is what it is. But uh, definitely go check out the gentleman who's making the cups, E-Time Rolls, over on TikTok. You can see the one signed by Chad Johnson. He told me the story of how he got to meet him to sign one of his cups and give him one of his cups as well. They were really cool looking. I told him if he had a Lions one, I would have bought it. But uh, unfortunately, he did not have one on hand. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, go check out the 2019 Prism video. That was definitely one of the biggest highlights of this show. And uh, I had a great time going through that table. But until next time, take care, stay safe, be kind.